Thanks so much for checking out this clip from the Athletes Only Podcast. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel for more great moments like this one. And now, here's Ryan Lochte. A lot of fans will remember the Lochte gate um, as the media dubbed it. Um, I would love, you know, if you'd be able to talk to me a little bit more about that incident that night at the gas station and then kind of the emotions that surrounded that coupled with the media's perception of just everything that kind of happened there. Let's first go off the the media. I mean, there's no other two ways about it. Yeah. Um, that's my opinion. Everyone has their own opinion. I don't like sure. the media. I know I have to be on it just to like make a living or do anything to reach out to my fans mostly. Well, I don't like the media. Um, they change everything. I learned it firsthand from my show. What they said it was like, oh, we're going to make you look like proper, like you're dedicated to swimming. No. They do it what's best for them um, and not what's best for their client or whatever. Or sure, they're interviewing or whatever. So I didn't like the media at first, but it was my fault. I mean, we won the 4 by 2 relay and a couple of guys I dragged out. I was like, let's go out and have fun. Let's celebrate. Like Olympics is over. Just cheat ass. Let's go celebrate. Yep. So it was me and three other guys. Uh, we went out partying all through the night. Um, we were all tipsy, drunk, um, headed back to the Olympic Village, and we all had to go to the bathroom um, on the way home. So the taxi cab driver, whoever we tried to get to take us, it was like, we have to go to the bathroom. We have to go to the bathroom. So we pulled over to the gas station. Um, we went, we all went in and the, the bathroom door was locked. So we were like, we got to pee. So there was a, like a hallway that walked out to the back of the um, gas stations. And we all went out there and peed in bushes. Like a normal guy does. Sure. Peed in bushes. We came back in. And my drug ass was, there was a sign that was kind of hanging down, like off his like lid, like, okay. And I just went like this, I smacked it and it was like a metal flimsy sign and it made a huge noise on the ground. And we just kept walking on, um, walking through the gas station into the cab. Um, immediately, um, we all got in the cab, we started driving the Cab driver started driving away. And then uh, we get pulled over. Not by a cop. It didn't have like cop lights or uh, two guys came out um, with guns. And we couldn't understand them. They're speaking um, language and barrier. And we were like, what? But they had guns. They told us to get out of the car. We got out of the car and we sat down on the sidewalk and it was like 50 feet from the uh, gas station. So we all sat down. Of course, my draw gas, me like, dude, they're not going to freaking shoot us. Like, what the heck is this? So I get up and be like, man, if you're going to shoot me, shoot me. Like all this stuff. And then the guy started coming closer to me with it. And I through the whole talking and yelling at um, between those two guys and us, we had to give them money in order for us to leave. Because we we heard, the, we know what this sure. is. So we yeah. had to give them money. We don't know if it was for the sign that I ripped down. We don't know if we're getting held up. We didn't, we had no idea. All we know is we gave them money to get back in the cab and go to the Olympic Village. End of story. Sure. That was it. They didn't have yeah, a, is... they didn't have a police badge. They didn't have they didn't show us ID. They didn't nothing. So we were still drunk in the morning. We had to go to like this brunch. Uh USA uh swim team did a uh, brunch. Um and we were still like I was still intoxicated. Um and then um what's that guy, Bush? Billy Bush? Billy Bush from Access Hollywood at that time. Uh, okay. Sound me like, because my real mom, she said like something to a reporter on the way that like I got robbed because I was talking to her 
be like, oh my gosh, we just held up my guns like this. So she, I guess she didn't know it was a reporter, told this reporter, and it got out to Billy Bush. Billy Bush came with a camp guard to be like, started interviewing me. I told him the story. I said, the guy had a gun. He put it to my forehead and cocked it and be like, give me your money. That was not, he was four feet away. Still a gun to my head, and we still have yep. even money. Yep. But that is what started everything. Ryan Lochte lying. Lochte lying. Lochte gate. And the media took off with this. Because, I mean, I guess it was happening because uh, Brazil is not that safe, I guess. Sure. And there's definitely a reputation side in the house. Like, it happened before, I guess. Yeah. And then a known, a big known athlete gets held up. The media takes off with it. It's the not a safe place, place anymore. Most about it. Well, one of the things was it took away from the other athletes that were competing and stuff because I was, I was all over the news. Every newspaper, Every TV channel, it was me. Lochte Gate. It got to the point, this is why I hate media sometimes. It got to the point that media said I I robbed the gas station. Yeah, I remember that. I vandalized the bathroom. The bathroom was locked. We couldn't even get in. Like, if you look up the USA Today, they did an investigation. They saw that the bathroom was locked, all this stuff. And the only thing that I... I guess you could say line or stretched was the fact that the gun wasn't at my forehead. It was away. That's it. But the media took off and, you know, everyone in this world, they're going to believe whatever the headline is. For me. I don't have regrets of what happened when I got back home because I have a good feel. I have a belief that everything happens for a reason. Um, I was dating my wife at the time, a Playboy model. I was like, yeah, I won. Um, <laughs> I was like, oh, she's going to leave me now. But it got her closer. She stayed with me because she knew who I was as a person. And she was like, don't let media do this. Like, be bigger than that. Yeah. Get up off your ass and keep moving forward. Um. I started hearing that from my close friends. My my circle was yeah. basically the entire world got smaller and smaller and smaller after that. I started noticing my true friends. I started noticing my true family. Saddest moment. One of the saddest moments was going through Twitter when I got back home after 16 and being the loving person of the USA of the sport of any athlete, basically, it started getting death threats. Started getting messages being like, you used to be my role model, now you're not, from kids. I immediately bawling my eyes out. Reedy, these kids, looked up to me. And, I, and I'm not a role model to them? What the hell am I doing with my life? So what I've known to do throughout my whole entire life is when you get knocked down, it doesn't matter how you get knocked down. It's how you get up and keep moving forward. And I, that's what I did. I just, with the help of my wife now, um, my family, my close friends, I got up. And I'm, you know what this crazy thing is? I'm still trying to get up and get moving. <laughs>